Welcome to the League of Know It All Weekly Recap with your host, Team Commissioner. Welcome to Week 10 Recap. Uh, getting close to the playoffs. Got a lot of things going on in the standings and uh, a lot of movement, honestly. We got some guys at the bottom getting pretty close, tied up, you know, within one game of each other. It could be anybody's penis trophy. So, uh, got to keep an eye on all that, right? Uh, let's see. A couple things real quick about the league. I'm thinking about doing the post uh the post draft or whatever have you the the after the the league really the championship meet it meet up if you will probably at play Linda's um, restaurant and bar or whatever on the west coast uh, or excuse me east coast near Tysville and stuff it's a pretty good place I got really good food and shit like that so I'm thinking maybe we'll have it there I think most of the players that are going to be in the playoffs are probably going to be in that area anyway so we'll uh, we'll kind of play that by ear. I'll probably put something more uh, solid within the next week or two. Um, that's just kind of my thought process right now as moving forward. Um, yeah, also in that meeting, we'll be discussing a lot of uh, post-league things as far as rules, regulations, things we can change. Um, I think this, this, week, this year, honestly, just as a whole, kind of have, has gone a little bit smoother personally. I think so. For those of you who weren't here last year, I mean, it was the first time in this league that we we put it together and put the scoring format and the rules and everything. And so, you know, you go through you go through growing pains all the time, and you never know what is going to come about. And you know, new things like the IR spot was a great idea this year. I think it was fucking probably one of the best ideas that whoever came up with it that we've ever agreed upon. Uh, there's a couple other things that we agreed upon last year. As far as the kickers go, I kind of like that this year, honestly. No, I, I don't know how much the kickers would have changed somebody's outcome. I mean, I have a feeling some of the – we had some close games this year. Honestly, thinking about it now, there's been a lot of like between like zero and five-point games won or, or lost. And I think the kicker might have swayed those some of those games one way or the other, honestly. But I like the fact that we've kind of dulled the kickers down a little bit because now it's it really is more of a skill game and a strategy game as far as, you know, you can't just get dumb luck on a kicker because, honestly, there's no way of predicting kickers. It's one of the most unpredictable factors in the NFL. And I personally would like to get rid of them all together. I get it that they're a part of the league. I understand that shit. But at the same time, I this is a good compromise, I feel like. Keepers are cool, I think. Pretty good so far. I don't know what we're doing. I think next year, like I said, we're doing March Madness bracket for the playoffs. You know, I kind of would like to start getting things in place. That's something maybe we'll vote on at the at the draft or the post party. Personally, I would like to have something in place that we know every year it's going to be the same thing, whether as far as picking the draft order. So. In essence, it's basically, you know, March Madness bracket or whatever it is. But we know it's going to be every year, I feel like. Or maybe people like like it switched up every year, you know. Just keep you on your toes and it's something different. Uh, like I said, last year we did a quiz that I made up. And I drew my spot out of a deck of cards. This year it was based on a win-loss record for baseball. Next year I think I'm going to do a March Madness thing. I mean, we could do like a golf thing too. You never know. Uh, who knows? So let's go ahead and start recapping. Well, I'll, I'll get into some topics later on. I had some written down, I think. And if you guys want to bring things up too, write them down, bring them to that party. I'll, I'll put the details on the website or in the Facebook group so everyone knows where it's at. We'll we'll hash that out pretty soon, and everyone uh, kind of get a heads up. It's not required; you don't have to go, and it's not paid for. However, I would recommend going. It's a really good time. A lot of get, we all get together one last time, one last hurrah, and we talk about things in the league. We hash things out, and I think I'm gonna do it on the like the Sunday, uh, the last like we're gonna basically have the two players playing for the belt at there. I think that would be really cool, and basically. 
whoever is going to win that is going to be there. I mean, obviously, you still have the Monday night game, unfortunately. But I don't, I don't feel like I don't think anybody's going to drive out an hour, an hour and a half, or whatever it is, just to go to a place for you know on a Monday night when they got to work in the morning. So Sunday, uh, I feel like it's a little more, a little bit better. I know they got to work in the morning, but at least you can watch the one o'clock games, the four o'clock games. Probably leave, you know, the night games. By then, hopefully, we'll know pretty well one way or the other. But you never know. Uh, so even if that's the case, we will absolutely get the belt to whoever actually wins it. But maybe we'll deem a winner Sunday, regardless at the time. Anyway, hashing those things out, bring a list of topics you want to cover. If you want to vote on things, we can. Like I said, this league is much as mine as it is yours. Uh, So I want it to be as enjoyable as possible. Mm -hmm. I think next year, this year I got pretty busy with work and things, and it kind of snuck up on me, these videos and things like that. Last year I kind of covered some news, and I kind of enjoyed it a lot more. I know this year has been kind of like just scores and just what the league is about. So I'm trying out some different things. Let me know what you think, honestly. I feel like I know you guys, half of you guys don't fucking watch these videos and half of you guys love these videos, So, which I like making them. Don't get me wrong. I just want to know, do you guys kind of like the fluff and stuff and or do you just kind of like the coverage of your scores, you know, or is it a little, little of both, you know? Let me know. Seriously. I think next year I might have actually some um, visuals and stuff like that as far as covering scores and, and it'll be a little more entertaining. We'll have like graphics and things up on the screen. I kind of want to get more into video- videography a little bit more. Uh, I think it'll be interesting and I'm thinking of starting a podcast at some point too as far as like sports gambling and stuff. I kind of get into it. DraftKings is, I'm going to stop rambling. I'm sorry. But DraftKings has gotten pretty bad as far as uh, football and playing and stuff like that. I think the average player is getting a lot better. It's a lot harder to score. So I've just kind of been working on sports betting. But anyway, let's move on to week 10 real quick. Uh, Up first, we have Mr. Dolphin Domination going against yours truly. I almost won the OEA lineup this week. Almost. Uh, somebody else beat me to it just a bit. 114 to 92. Killed it, bro. My uh, two two players I recently acquired DeMarco Murray scored me 27 points and Robert Woods scored me 36. So between those two, that was over half my score. And then the only other two players that scored double digits was Dak Prescott scored me 13 points, even though they only scored seven points in that game. I still got 13 out of them. And Greg Zuckerlin, the kicker. For the Rams, 10 points. That's a big score in our league. On the flip side, Jared Goff, the uh, the quarterback whisperer, 29.5 points. That's a lot of points. And then Jimmy Graham on a Thursday night beat 17.7 points. And then Isaiah Crowell, 16 points. Some big scores there. You had Latavius Murray go for 12 on your bench, but it happens, dude. Rob Kelly went out with an injury. Will Fuller was went out with an injury. You got some bad, bad, bad breaks there. I ended up beating you, and we'll get to standing soon. But I'm basically locked up for a playoff position at this point, uh, so there is no questions about that. Up next, we have Obi Wan Kimbrobi versus Balls on Your Forehead. Seventy-eight point one points to. To 105.6 points, balls in your forehead broke his losing streak this week. Uh, let's see, 78.1, OB1 had Matthew Stafford go for 21, Michael Thomas 19, Sammy Watkins 11, and the rest went single digits on your team for 78 points. On the flip side, we got Fitz Magic 10, Le'Veon Bell 13.7, Theo Riddick 12, Deshaun Jackson 11, Austin Hooper 14. Mr. Funches himself, 24, 23.7 points. And even most of your team almost broke double digits. Steelers had eight points. And your kicker had nine, man. 105 points, solid score, solid lineup. Can't complain there, man. Nothing wrong with that. Next up, we've got I'm a Snowflake versus Gator Moskin, beating up on the little guys. 94.8 versus uh, 89.2. I'm a Snowflake beating. Gator Moss getting Marcus Marietta 17 points, Todd Gurley 16, Mr. Thomas 12.9, Latavius Murray 12.9, and Delaney Walker 9. Seahawks D got you 11, and New Orleans kicker 9. 
which is pretty solid in our lineup for 94.8. It's a solid score. Flip side, Kirk Cousins went B Nanas, 30, 30 burger. Adam Thielen went B Nanas, 30 points. That basically made up over half of your <laughs> That's like you that's like 59 60 combined points and you had an 89. So that's kind of rough. Vernon Davis went ham with 11 points. You shouldn't have to play him whenever Mr. Uh, 86 is out of the lineup. Next up, we have Hulk Hagen versus Badger at Bangers, the two that are Getting in close to the playoffs, have a chance to make it, have a chance to blow it. You better not screw it up at the end of the year or you guys will be out. So Mr. Hulk Hagen lost to Badger Ab Bangers, finally snapping his losing streak. Uh, Josh McCown, 12.5. Sterling Shepard, 22. Tevin Coleman, 15. And the rest of your team, shit the bed. Flip side, bad draft bangers. Russell Wilson, 19. Orleans Darkwa, 11. Late scratch. That's a good pickup. Um, or actually, they told him he's going to start. Golden Tate, 18.7. Marquise Lee, 16.5. Evan Ingram, 12. And the Lions, D, get you 11. That's a pretty solid score right there for 111 points. Solid score, bro. Solid, solid score. Next up, we have Mr. Team Van Damage, and believe it or not, that's all right, Mr. Van Damage beat me out of the oh yeah lineup versus Shake and Bake. Uh, Team Van Damage scored 126.6 points. That's a small victory for him since he is in the bottom of this league right now. And tied with somebody else, and someone else, and the two other guys are within the game of them. Small victory, dude. That's pretty awesome. Congratulations. Cam Newton, 35.7. Amir Abdullah, 12. Alvin Kamara, 25. Doug Baldwin, 12. Eric Ebron, 10. And Kenyon Drake, the one that I traded to you, sir. Congratulations. 16 points for a total of 126 points, dude. Nice job. Or a shake and bake. Again, didn't set his lineup. I don't know what the hell is going on. I reached out to him this week or today. I have a guy, somebody reached out to him. He has changed his number and his father doesn't even know where he's at. So either he's probably part of the Russian mob, A, part of some sex trafficking ring, B, or C, he's just a dumbass and doesn't set his lineup and he's trying to avoid everybody. I don't know. You're For you to decide, we'll figure that out at some point. Next up, we have Mr. Ballbuster. That's right, Mr. Ballbuster is at the bottom this week. Sucks to be you. The Philadelphia Bison actually pulled out a, a good, decent score this week. He came close. He beat me as the overall. Uh, let's see. Ballbuster, 14 points from Drew Breezy, Christian McCaffrey, 18.5, and DeAndre Hopkins, 17. But everybody else was single digits, bro. Sucks. Tom Brady on the flip side, 22.6 points. Duke Johnson, 11. Stephon Diggs, 15. AJ Green, 23. And Juju Smith-Schuster, 18. Rams, D, 16. That's solid. Real solid lineup there, dude. Uh, zero points for your kicker. No big deal. You still pulled out the victory. Looking good, looking good. So let's flip over the standings real quick. Last thing, and we will see who's in the playoffs so far. Yours truly is still in first. Boom, bitches. Uh, right behind me is I'm a snowflake on the west side, 7-3. and three. I am 8-2. and two. I win one more game, or snowflakes loses one game in the next two weeks. I lock up first. I love it, I love it, I love it. So... Uh, let's see. Everyone else, we got three guys at six and four. Badger have bangers, balls on your forehead, and Hulk Hagen are all six and four. Those guys could literally tie me if I lose out and they went out. Not likely, but it happens. Uh, so I'm a snowflake, and good luck, Chuck. I've locked up a. Uh, I have locked up their playoff position, their playoff berths, if you will. We have got. Two guys at five and five that could one of those are one, two, three, four, five. One of those guys are right now would have to go to will be able to go to the playoffs. 
So basically what's going to happen is, is if those two guys went out and let's say one of you other guys who are six and four lose out, those guys are in, you guys are out. It's not locked up yet. There's still some games to be played right now. At the bottom, however, we have everybody pretty neck and neck. We got Bison, Shake, and Bake at four and six. And then we have Van Damage, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Gator Moskin all tied for three and seven. We have a penis race, dude. Let's do it. I fucking love it, man. I love how everybody is super close. Very nice. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, guys, hope best wishes to you. You know, hope you make the playoffs. Don't blow it. Two weeks to go. Stay focused. Get those W's. Make it happen. Get in the playoffs. Get in, baby. And, and uh, true to form in our league, dilly dilly.